Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of our Community Access. This week we will visit with the Oxford Library where they have a musical history exhibit. Then we went to the Oxford Elementary PTA Spring Fair all today on our Community Access. Welcome back. Our Oxford Library has a musical history exhibit. With the story is our reporter, Terry Stiles. Terry? Hi, Bill. I bet you can recognize this guy behind me. This is Winston, and I'm at the Oxford Township Public Library. That's why I'm talking so quiet. We're going to talk to Library Director Brian Cloutier. There's some up updates and upgrades here at the library, so come along. <laughs> So Bill, I know it's been a while since we've been at the library and I caught up with Brian. There's a couple new things going on here and we're going to spend about 10, 20 minutes with Brian, have him talk real fast and tell us what's going on. First of all, this is gorgeous. What's going on with this? Well, thank you. It is actually part of our initiative to actually bring our staff more out into public view. Um, it's a transformation of our public service area. If you recall, the old desk was more rectangular and had a lot of barrier issues, uh, both for ADA compliancy, right, right. Uh, but also in addition to that, we had uh, an issue where the staff really was seated way down back behind a big bulky desk. Right. And with uh, the staff's inability today to have a lot of time off desk to work on different projects, they needed more of a workable space to be able to work on some of those projects uh, right here in the public space. And so that was part of the initiative that brought this whole desk together, as well as the desk uh, transformation that in the rearrangement of the youth department uh, as well. So uh, this also allows for us to take better use of the modern technology that libraries have today. Um, we have the ability now for patrons to walk right up to the desk and have a seat uh, right across the desk from the staff and and work on uh, having a, either research projects or having uh, one of the staff assist them with one of their technology, their electronic mm -hmm. devices. Right. Um, so there's a lot of multifaceted components that go into what made this particular project relevant and important in today's library world. So we're very happy to, to have the opportunity to, to have this. And the thing that you mentioned to me, that, which makes so much sense, and I never would have thought of that, is you, we are lucky enough, and you were lucky enough, to have a company that is familiar with designing library equipment, right? That's what they do. Absolutely. If you recall, probably about three or four years ago, we went through a whole transformation in introducing uh, RFID technology mm -hmm. uh, and re revamping our, our point of service desk and in er introducing a self-checkout uh, component to uh, the, the front circulation area. So we renovated our circulation lobby back then. We worked with the same company today that designed that whole workspace for us, um, in part because they were a Michigan company. We already had a longstanding relationship with them, and they worked with the same uh, mill and, and designers that actually designed and laid out that space. So we wanted to, to have continuity. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we want functionality, but we want continuity as well, and so it was only uh, a natural uh, pro uh, process for us to work with them again on this project. As beautiful as this building is, and it's always such a comfortable building to be in, I didn't think that you could improve on it, and you have. This is just so much more accessible. Not to mention, they get to look out that window and see the deer and the cranes, and <laughs> it's just so bright and open in here. Show me what else is going on, and then I want to talk about the music um, exhibit that you have here from the Oxford Museum. But let's go see what you're talking about as far as the, the 
the children's unit is concerned, and even when you walk in, it looks more open. So we're going to talk about that. Absolutely. Glad to show you. Okay, we're in the youth part of the library now. Gosh, it looks different in here, Brian. What do we do here? We did a lot of things here. Actually, we did a lot more in this room than we did in the adult room. Uh, one of the issues that we had was a line of sight issue. With the old desk uh, was actually on a low surface, but the stacks that we had behind the desk uh, actually didn't allow us to have a good line of sight into the children's garden and also to any, any uh, patrons that we had sitting behind the desk. <clears throat> so it was not just a line of sight issue that we were working with, but a functionality, but also safety and security. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a big issue in any public building yes. today. Yes. And so line of sight is important. And that was a component that we brought into play in the adult room, but more importantly brought into play here in the youth sure. department. The youth department is arguably one of the busiest departments in the library. Yeah. And as a result of that, we have families coming in on a regular basis, and they're coming in for story time or to conduct research, mm -hmm. uh, but they're coming in and staying for long periods of time. There's no, absolutely nothing wrong with that. No, no, no. And so <clears throat> as a result, we needed to, again, provide better functionality. Mm -hmm. We worked with the same firm that we worked with in the adult room uh, in designing a new desk, a credenza behind the desk that opened up the line of sight, but also gave us more storage and functionality. We moved some stacks around. We were able to get a new bank of um, computer tables that wasn't as big and bulky and also opened up line of sight again. Um, and then when you enter the room, we also uh, were able to incorporate some new shelving that allowed us to have better display area mm -hmm. And overall, again, I go back to that whole functionality component of it, but that's a very important component to what we do. I mean, the space has to function, and when we can't break down the wall barriers that we have today, uh, at least not right now, um, we had to be able to work within the space that we were given. And so that was a major part of what kind of spearheaded and brought this whole thing to life. And not only aesthetically does it look more open and airy, it's good for the parents. I, we were here earlier and there was a little guy running around. Mom could see him from where she was sitting. Of course, she's going to have to run after him and get him. There's less barricade for her to do that, which that's what you want for the kids around here. You want them to feel free and at home, right? Well, we do. We do. Um, I mean, that's this is the children's department, mm -hmm, so right. it's obviously not the quietest department in the building, and there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. That's right. Um, but it's also a very, very busy uh, department, and right. being one of the busiest departments in the library, it's also the smallest room that we have mm -hmm. for public space uh, in in the library. So we have to we have to be creative in how we think about laying out a space, and that's why the firm that we worked with not only designed the functionality of the desk with the staff, um, but also design the layout yeah. of the floor space as well, which was a very important piece of the puzzle. Yeah. I mean, you have to, it's one thing to design something, mm -hmm. but it's another thing to actually be able to visualize how it's going to function and work when it's all done. And so that's why, that's one of the other reasons why we went with the company we did on this project. You added floor space to something you already had. You guys, uh, your planning ahead is just amazing to me how you continue to do that and make it comfortable for us who are using it here. Well, that's our main objective. I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And so at the end of the day, we want this space to work for you. Obviously, we have certain restraints and policies and procedures that we have to put in place to keep the library comfortable environment for everybody. But those are just peripheral things that kind of bring the whole picture together and make the library, at least Oxford Public Library, what it is today. So it's a great place to be. Well, speaking of utilizing space, you also utilize it to show off our historical treasures, so let's go see that. So when you first walk into the library, of course, you run into the fish tank, and that's a, such a fun thing to do. I mean, you walk in and you don't expect that, but as you move through the library, before you get into the adult section, there's always this wonderful, cozy spot. And this is where you have 
all of our historical s displays. You had a couple months ago, you had the um, Hemingway exhibit, and that was so fun to see. And now this is really exciting, because this is music, and I love music. But we also have a musical treasure here. So what are we displaying right now, Brian? First, let me just say that it's an honor and a privilege to be part of the Northeast Oakland Historical mm -hmm. Society and Museum. Yeah. And the fact that I work very closely with them is part of the reason why we are able to have these exhibits here. Um, the museum will be closed uh, during the month of May for cleaning and curating and things of that nature. And so it was only logical that we would take advantage of that situation while the museum is closed and bring some of the artifacts here to the Oxford Public Library so that people can still take advantage of, of seeing the treasures that we have here in Oxford. This particular exhibit, which is 100 years of Oxford music history, uh, is really near and dear to me because of my musical background and interest of, 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 for myself. But needless to say, it's a great exhibit. It's a great opportunity to, to see artifacts in a different light and uh, take advantage of the uh, exhibit space that we have here at the library for patrons to come in and, and, and see these, these artifacts, these treasures. So. Well, and there's a lot of people in this community that have been involved musically They're on a personal level, but what you know, what person doesn't get touched by a hundred years of music? You said it started in 18-something? Well, this particular exhibit really primarily falls between the dates of about 1850 to 1950. Uh, some of the artifacts in this exhibit actually predate that period, but when we look at the time frame of the people who were in the community and mm -hmm. when the community was established, um, a lot of these artifacts really come within that time period. And so, uh, for example, one of the main things that we have in here uh, is the uh, the document, the original score, rather, that was written, handwritten, uh, by a young man who lived in Oxford, was a student here, at 17 years old, back in 1944, uh, was given the task and the challenge of creating the first fight song or school song for the school, and so that piece of history is here to have the original handwritten score. Uh, still intact and in the condition that it's in um, has been a remarkable uh, feat. And so we're very pleased and honored to have the opportunity to display that here for the public. Outside of that, the rest of the artifacts in this exhibit are really centered around the original um, township or city band that Oxford once had back in the day. And the interesting thing, and you'll see in this exhibit, is the original um, state of Michigan charter that provided an opportunity, I think it was in 1923, for local municipalities to levy a tax to support oh music in their communities. <laughs> and so that is in here. And there are also some news articles that show later in later years when Oxford itself had made the decision to recall that tax and stop supporting that, which is a shame in many ways, but the times were much different. And so uh, you'll see that original news article along with a cello that was um, owned and played by a local musician. Wow. We also have the original staff, music staff, that um, Mr. Unger, Ed Unger, oh, yeah. uh, had with the city band back in the day. So that's in this, in this case. There's some original music that dates back to the early 1820s uh, in here, as well as an old violin um, and some other artifacts that are really in related to the music scene and also... <clears throat> Interesting because we have some awards that were granted when the city band uh, actually performed at the state fair back in the 40s. So it, it's just a very, it's a whirlwind of music history. Um, it's a concerted effort, no, no uh, pun intended there, <laughs> of many people who came together and really brought uh, rich history to, to Oxford. So. Yeah. And stuff that I didn't know about. I've been here 30-some years, and I had no idea that we even had a municipal band, no, no less a tax for it. There's also artifacts that were donated to that municipal band that we actually have here, right? Absolutely, yes. They are in, on display in the behind the adult services desk where we were just standing mm -hmm. a few minutes ago. And so it, it, the exhibit is not just in this part of the building, but it's also in the adult services area too. So make sure if you visit the library mm -hmm. that you're going to look at all the exhibit, not just what you see behind us here. Well, there's always a good reason to come in and see this library, just to sit here and relax and love it. So my point about the Oxford Library, and I just feel like it's unique. You know, I've been to other libraries and other communities. I just feel like the Oxford Library is the nucleus of Oxford. It's not just you're coming in here 
to read a book. You know, you're coming here to really experience Oxford, number one, and the history of Oxford. And I think you should take some credit for that. <laughs> I appreciate that you do that. Well, I, I appreciate that. But really, the Oxford Public Library is a, a group of hardworking individuals yep. that really care about the community. Mm -hmm. The entire staff, uh, right. they do great things every yep. day. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, I get a lot of credit for that as the director. But it really is... It is it's the staff and it's the community that makes Oxford Public Library what it is. I mean, this is the third library that I have uh, had the opportunity of working with during my career in libraries. Um, and it really is by far the most fascinating community, the uh, strongest uh, in terms of support uh, for public library services. Um, there's so many great things that we just take for granted um, every day that many communities don't have. And so to be part of that and building that and building the team and r outreach into the community, it's, it's really, it means a lot to me personally. Yeah, so thank I can you. tell. And, and yes, you are your team. And your team is very friendly. It's so nice to come in here and see those familiar faces. They've been here for a long time. So it's not like you have a huge turnover. You are part of the community and we are part of you. And you feel that when you walk in here. So thank you for, thank you and your staff for being here and continuing to make your library better and a more exciting place to be. Well, and I think what kind of plays into that too is the fact that although not everybody, a large portion of our staff here actually live yeah. right here in Oxford. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they are the community. Mm -hmm. They understand the community. They're here sure. every day. And so that is, I think, an important piece of the puzzle as well. And it really makes us or gives us the ability to better understand what the needs, what the oh, yeah. ever-changing needs of this community are, and to meet them full speed ahead rather than behind the time. And so it's 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 been a wonderful experience, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to be here every day. Well, the next time we come back, there's more to talk about. There's presentation opportunities now at the library in your conference rooms, and I want to talk to you about that when we come back. So I'm not going to wait so long to come back next time. Absolutely. We'd love to have you anytime. Don't miss the Oxford Musical History Exhibit at the Oxford Library. Next up, we went to the Oxford Elementary PTA with the story as our reporter, Rachel Baker. Rachel? We're at the Oxford Elementary Spring Fair here and it's going to be a really fun time. This is all raising money for the PTO, Parent Teacher Organization. There's got a bunch of fun activities here. We've got a cakewalk, some donations, some food, and silent auction. So let's go check it out and see what it's all about. I'm here with a lovely lady who's running the table at with all the food. So can you tell me what all this is about and where these donations came from? Yes, these all came from all the different parents here at DA and OES, and they're sold and the money goes back to the PTO. That's great. What happens with the leftovers? If there is leftovers, they go to the fire department for a donation. I'm sure they're really popular with the kids. They must go pretty fast. Yes, they usually do. got to speak with Madam President of the PTO, Miss Melissa Williams. Can you please tell me about the silent auction back here? Sure, sure. So we're a 501c3 PTO, um, so we're able to ask for a lot of donations from local vendors as well as around the, the country. The PTO funds a lot of um, the, uh, we help fund the field trips, um, the assemblies throughout the year. We provide a $250 uh, stipend for each teacher, including um, the special teachers um, throughout the year. We also give money to the technology fund. Um, and uh, help the principals pay for other things that come up during the year. That's nice. And so this, I'm sure, contributes pretty well to it. Yes, this is almost 30% of our entire budget for the year. Um, we have class baskets that are auctioned off. We have um, regular um, 
items. We have some pretty great items this year. We have some Disney tickets, Disney uh, donated. We have Matt Stafford signed a ball for us. We had Golden Tate sign a jersey for us. I see, it's a superhero theme all around here. It's really nice. Who picked it? The kids, the PTO. We actually do a online, uh, we give some choices, we come up with some choices, and we do an online poll, and the, the highest wins. Harry Potter was a close second. Wow, that's really exciting. I mean, all great picks, all great picks, but you can't go wrong with superheroes. You can't. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for talking to me, Ms. Right, Williams. Alright, Adele and Sayla, how old are you guys? Six. Six. Wow. Do you guys go to school together? Yes. Are you excited to go in the inflatables? Yes. And I like your costume. It's very cute. <gasps> Who's your favorite superhero? Um, Wonder Woman. What about you? Do you have a favorite superhero? Yeah. Who's your favorite superhero? Wonder Woman. one of the Oxford Middle School teachers, Mr. Gray, and his son, Jackson. All right, can you tell me, Jackson, what's your favorite part about being here today? Well, I'm very good at doing in school, but, but I'm a little, I'm getting very good at skating. Very good at skating. <laughs> That's cool. Nothing to do with today, but he's liking these games here. <laughs> All right, thanks. What about you, Mr. Gray? How long have you been coming here? Uh, you know, this is Jackson's first year in kindergarten at uh, uh, DA, and so I don't come to the fair until this year. This is our first year coming, but we're having a great time. It's a great uh, fundraiser. We're really enjoying it. These guys love the bounce house. Oh, yeah, bounce house, and he was extremely excited about getting a ring pop. Oh, yeah. Like a very long time. And then that, and Mrs. Gray's over here, and we got our little guy Leo around, running around like a crazy man, three-year-old at the OELC, so we're having a good time. All right, thank you so much for talking with me. Nice to see you. Right, nice to see you too, Jackson. Yep. Great. Say go Wildcats. Go I'm here with Ms. LaPons, a teacher at OES. Can you please tell me what you're doing here? I'm volunteering just to let the kids have a good time at the spring fair. I can see you're punching some tickets out that they have. What's that? The tickets are for them to play the games. They buy the tickets in advance and then they get punches in their cards so that they can get prizes for how many punches that they have. Oh, so like the more activities they get, they can get gifts and stuff for it. There's a prize room and the more punches you have, they equate to different kinds of prizes. I guess it's pretty fulfilling too. You're helping out all the kids. What's the best part of it for you? Well, the best part is seeing past and present students and they just love seeing you at, outside of school and just see, catching up and seeing what they're up to now. What grade do you teach? I teach first grade. How do you like it? I love it. It's the best. <laughs> What's your favorite part about teaching those kids? The best part is seeing how much growth can happen over one whole year and seeing these little babies turn into independent learners. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with me. You're welcome. Okay, Carl, so can you tell me the game that you're hosting here? Uh, we're playing a game where you have to shoot the angry bird into the bucket. You basically press the uh, angry bird and stomp on the lever to make it fly into the air. Have it, it's a pretty popular? Yeah, it's pretty popular. A lot of people are coming to play it. That's cool. How old are you? Are you volunteering here? Yeah, I'm volunteering. I'm 13. That's fun. I'm sure you really like it. It's nice and fulfilling, isn't it? Yeah, it's really fun. All right, thanks for talking to me, Carl. No problem. Thank you. two lovely ladies who are going to be having a lot of fun at the spring fair. So can you tell me what's your favorite part about being here? Um, that I can hang out with my friends and um, it's also a fundraiser for the school. 
Uh, I like going here just because I get to see all my friends and I get to just play games and just enjoy myself. <laughs> what, do you guys have a favorite superhero? That's a theme tonight, right? Yeah, my favorite superhero is um, Superman. <laughs> all right, I like it. And yours? My name, uh, mine is Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Ooh, I like that. I like both of those. Those are really good. Here with Miss Heather Schaefer, and so I understand the class baskets are a big part of what tonight's all about. Can you tell me a bit about this? I know the ladies and gentlemen watching may not know what it's about. Okay, so each class at both Daniel Axford and Axford Elementary School um, have a class basket theme, and the student families donate things associated with that theme for the basket and then we have like a each class has a class helper if you will and that mom or dad or whomever it might be takes everything home and puts the basket together and adds all their little touches to it to make it really cute and presentable and then we auction it off I so see this is a large fundraiser for us so last year we raised about 3500 towards um, the PTO program which supports both schools and we do all kinds of stuff for the teachers and the students so the money goes right back into our direct kids here. What are some of the themes that I'm seeing here? Um, these are baking baskets so there's all kinds of baking goodies in here anything from like baking cupcakes sprinkles to baking pans we have Disney themes we have sports themes Michigan State U of M we always do a few competition things um, so anything from adult themes like date nights to children's themes like Disney. That's really fun and I'm sure it's very popular among everybody. Everybody loves it and everybody, all the kids want to find their class basket and they want their parents to bid on it and then of course the kids want the kids type baskets and it's just, it's, it's fun. It gets everybody talking and moving around. This is our first time coming and we've only been here a little bit but I love how it reminds me of fairs we had when I was little. I especially love the cakewalk and it was his very first game he played and he won a cake the very first thing so it was lots of fun. I won a giant brownie. Oh that's cool. I'm here with Danielle and she's volunteering from NHS so um, what brought you to do this? Uh, well, I love volunteering. That's a part of the reason why I began to uh, be a member in NHS anyway. So I always like to help out with the little kids. That's always the thing I sign up for first, is anything at elementary schools. So the prize room was one of the things that was open, so I was like, okay, I'll just do the prize room then. <laughs> That's fun. And what seems to be like the kids' most favorite thing? What are they most drawn to when they come in here, do you think? Uh, definitely the ones that are worth more points. I feel like they always walk down this way first. Um, probably those squishier balls or the drum set, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks fun. Well, thank you for talking to Danielle. No problem, thanks. All right, what's your name? My name is Jalen Renee Jacobson. Wow, that's a beautiful name. So how old are you? I'm eight years old and I'm in third grade and I have the greatest teacher ever, Miss Bartlow. I can see you really are excited to be here. How many years have you come to this thing? Um, this is my second year. First, yeah. That's fun. What's your favorite part about being here? What's your favorite activity? Uh, I like the cakewalk because I, I want a cake. Absolutely! What cake did you win? It was like a big blue cake with swirlies on it. That's really exciting. That really is. So I see you have a lot of tickets there. What are you going to do with them? Uh, I'm thinking about going back to Cakewalk, but there's a really long line. So I might just use them over there. That's cool. The prizes are pretty cool. What'd you win? What do you hope to win? I really want one of the big squishy balls. <laughs> Alright, thank you for talking with me. Welcome. And that's all from the Oxford Elementary Spring Fair. We had a lot of fun and talked to a lot of group, uh, kids and parents here and some teachers as well. This is all going to the PTO, Parent Teacher Organization, to fund all the school activities. Thank you, Oxford, and good night. There you go. Well, that's all the time for this week. We hope you enjoyed our program. So for our reporters, Rachel Baker and reporter and editor Terry Stiles, I'm Bill Service, and you have a wonderful, wonderful week.